the width of a tornado related to the amount of distance for which the tornado is on the ground. The accompanying data represent the width in yards and length in miles of tornadoes in a particular region for one calendar year, complete parts A through K. So just hang in there for this one. We're going to do one step at a time. So it's going to open up our tornado data set. We can go ahead and copy this and open a stack crunch. So we're wanting to know, does the width explain the how long it's on the ground? So the how wide the tornado is is the explanatory variable. Explain why this data should be analyzed as bivariate quantitative data. So for each tornado, how many variables are measured? Two, bivariate. We have width and length. Now draw a scatter uh, diagram of the data. What type of relationship appears to exist between the width and length of tornadoes? Choose the correct graph. Okay, so here is our data right here. I'm gonna go ahead and go to graph and scatter plot. So the width we're saying is the x, length is the y, response variable, explanatory variable. Just press compute, and there we go. So which one of these does it look like? Okay, so it's between A or B. Let's look at C, definitely not C, and definitely not D. So between A and B, notice I've got my two dots here and two dots here, and this just has one dot. So it's gotta be this one. So it looks roughly linear. So we have positive, I guess is what it's asking for. So a positive relationship. As the width increases, the length on the ground tends to increase on average. Determine the correlation coefficient between width and length. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and X out of this, and I need to run a regression. So stat, regression, simple linear, width and length, and just press compute. And I could have just gone here first, and there it is. Here is, it's looking for R, 0.8, Four, zero. Is there a linear relationship between tornado's width and its length on the ground? Looks fairly linear, although it does spread out here a little bit, right? But we can say linear. There aren't any obvious curves. Now find the least squares regression line, which we just did when we ran the regression right here. So recall though, the way they want this input is that we're gonna put in the slope term first. We're running to three decimals, so it'll be 0 0.010 x plus 0.251. So just be really careful on the rounding. I can see um, you possibly missing that. So go ahead and put that in. Again, notice how that matches up with our line here. Again, StatCrunch does it the way most statistical programs do, and they switch these. The My Labs, I'll be honest, it sort of assumes you're gonna be using the TI-84 calculator, and its default regression puts it in this form. Now predict the length of a tornado whose width is 400 yards, and it just says around a one decimal place. So again, we can do this one of two ways. We can use our calculator and just put this in, 0 0.01 times 400 plus 0.251. However, let me just show you how to do this on StatCrunch. Edit, and we're gonna go over here where it says predictions. So right here, I'm just gonna put 400. And then down here, here we go, here's our predicted Y, and it says around a one decimal place, so 4.3. Okay, so was the tornado whose width is 840 yards and length 5.4 miles on the ground longer than would be expected? So this one's a little tricky, I guess. So we need to kind of, 840, it's gonna be, let's see, that's 950. How about this one? There's 840. So is this tornado here, and I can take it and highlight it if I need to, just so I can focus on it. Is that on the ground longer than expected? So what was it predicted? So the predicted amount would have been this value right here. So it was predicted to be on the ground a little bit longer, right? If I'm looking here, looks like that prediction would be right here. But it was actually on the ground a little bit less than that. Okay, so to find this one out, 
width is 840. I'm going to go ahead and put 840 into my predicted Y. And when I press Compute, scroll down, 840 is predicted to be about 8.7. So the predicted length of Tornado 840, so the predicted length was 8.7. Or I could have done that by hand, right? I could have done 0 0.010 times 840 plus 0.251 is, so 5.4 5 is definitely less than expected. So now let's interpret the slope. So here's my slope here at 0 0.01. So for each, and we need to think of our units. And here's our equation again. So for each one unit increase in X, and what are our units here? They're in yards. So one yard increase in my width, the length will increase by, and it's whatever it is in the slope. 0 0.01. By 0 0.01, it should say miles here. Maybe but I'm going to report that, and by the time you see it, it'll say miles. 0 0.01 miles on average. Explain why it does not make sense to interpret the intercept. Select the choice below, and if necessary, fill in answer boxes to complete your choice. So what does that y-intercept mean? That y-intercept occurs when x, in this case the width, is zero. So does it make any sense to talk about a tornado with a zero width? No, a tornado is going to have some width. So it looks like it's going to be this D of zero yards. All right. Parquet, what proportion of the variability in tornado length is explained by the width of the tornado? So recall what this number is. This is R squared. So I'm going to come back over here, R squared. And R squared is usually presented as a percent, and R is usually presented as a decimal. So R squared here is 0 0.706. So this is going to be 70.6%. All right, well, I hope that helps.